Servant, Season 2, Episode 2, Spaceman. I'm Joe. Please subscribe to this channel. So, I do this YouTube channel pretty much just for fun. I have a full-time job, and because of that, sometimes I don't always follow through on every video. Uh, case in point, my discovery clips. I tried to do Season 3, and I got choked up, and then I tried to ki kick them back in, and I just didn't follow through. But I have a reason, and it and this rant ties into Servant. That show Discovery, so much is going on, yet so little is happening. And that's why I just couldn't. With all the other things going on in my life, I couldn't make the time. Servant is the exact opposite. So little is going on. But so much is happening. You can literally feel this take place within the course of a day. 30 minutes in a day, in a half a day. The shows don't feel like they go on. They don't go on for weeks. They don't have scenarios and going back and forth. It's a real, like, a study of a moment in time. So much little details packed in there that the show just is so good and so captivating to me. This was the perfect example of that because it was a half hour of just, you just get in, you, you're locked in, you know it's not going to go crazy, but you know you want to watch it again with the subtitles on to hear what you missed, to make sure you, you pick up every little detail great details in this episode this was basically just the what happened to roscoe episode roscoe wakes up in his car comes into the house thinks he just fell asleep and he's just been out for a few hours doesn't realize that he's been out for four days <laughs> and that brings um in natalie she comes over puts him under to see what happened for him to remember because he doesn't remember and what he remembers ends up being absolutely chilling. I had to write it down. I had to watch it again in subtitles to hear and see what he said and he mumbles, they're on their knees for him. They are bleeding. His hand is a hook. Baby, he goes four, 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 passing forward, passing forward, passing forward the baby. Passing forward the baby to him, takes out the eyes and throws them away. Chilling, chilling. And yet I had to watch it again to see the subtitles of what he said. But he describes a cult scene. He describes there's someone with a hook in his hand. He describes him with the, the, the baby. We don't know what baby it is. You hear a recording of Roscoe talking with Leanne. Absolutely amazing. Chilling stuff. What's going on with this cult? Um, that's the focus. That's the, that's the big question now. Roscoe was there with the cult for four days. He was, he blocked it out. They had to get it out of him through hypnosis. Um, cult video also. Now, in the last episode, we saw that random clip of kids harassing May at the mall. Dorothy's watching a YouTube clip. She, this is a clip on YouTube of a fat man naked freaking whipping himself. Is this, is this cult more notorious, no more nefarious than we were led on? How long was Dorothy doing a story on this cult? Or was it just that one standoff moment? Because she didn't really recognize her at first. Which would beg the question, if she did a story on her, how did she not know who she was when she first saw her? How well known is this cult? How well known was this May Markham? How much did they blame Dorothy before the events of this series? How much did they know about her if she was the one who uncovered them or if she was the one who was there at the standoff? If she also was there when Leanne was in the little Honey Boo Boo pageant? So, fascinating questions about the cult. Fascinating questions and the Roscoe thing was fantastic. Going through other things on the episode... Um, the episode on the Dorothy standpoint starts and ends with water... Uh, you think Dorothy's running a bath. She's not, which was weird. Uh, Julian wakes up and there's no one in the bath. Ends at the end of the episode. Dorothy's in the, in the, in the bathroom and the water stops and the pipes go and the ground starts shaking and those cracks in the foundation go. Um, that is because Dorothy has officially lost it. <laughs> Dorothy's called into work and decides that she, she... She can't sleep. She's unsettled. She feels like Jericho is unsettled. So she decides she's going to go on television to soothe him. 
knowing that maybe they're watching the show somewhere. So she does the anchoring in a baby going to sleep voice. And her co-anchor it looks like he's be- beyond himself mortified. <laughs> And then at the end, lets out the little thing about missing teens. Even though she's 18, she's not really missing teen. She's an adult. And how, you know, come home, Leanne. Fantastic stuff on her end. Um, Sean was more of a bystander in this episode. Not a lot of Sean stuff. Julian, however, was the real focal point of the episode. It was called Spaceman. We're really digging deeper into his character, his troubles. What troubles him? He believes in nothing. He's an atheist. Dorothy says that to him when Dorothy's talking about her connection to Jericho and how he's like, that's BS. You're projecting. She's like, you don't believe in anything. And then later in the episode, when they interrogate Roscoe, not interrogate, hypnotize and interrogate Roscoe, at first, Julian is terrified. He almost starts crying when he hears the story, when he hears about the straw, because he remembers the straw as being something that Leanne did when they were at the house in the first season, the charred up house. He he looks like he's about to cry. He looks like he's terrified by the concept of them plucking out Jericho's eyes. And then within a minute, he's like, he's full of crap. He's full of it. He's he's made it up. He's hallucinating. He's drugged. He doesn't want to believe. And that was what Natalie says. I want to help you, but you have to believe in something no matter how stupid it is. I, I like the fact that she said we tried all these different things to help you, including dropping acid. Um, so Julian's character is really, really interesting. His little spaceman story about how he wanted to go to space and then realized there was no wall... He had a funny line where he's like, who wants to go to space? You effing do and puts the doll in the spaceman costume. And then the doll watching Dorothy on TV. And then Dorothy feeling better like she helped the doll. They're implying what that doll is. Like, is is Jericho's soul in that doll? Is Jericho with Leanne in the cult? Or is... Jericho really dead and the soul is embodied in that doll and that was the doll actually came back to life when Leanne was there they're leaving those little they're sprinkling in those little hints by the way the doll was just watching mommy on tv and enjoying it all fantastic stuff Leanne at the end her phone call chilling the way she calls why is she looking for me why didn't you tell her what she did she's like an avenging angel it's almost like she left out of disgust. She left because she realized she was helping people who probably didn't deserve it. And now they're looking for her. And she wants to know why. Her return was fantastic. Just a phone call, just her voice, just hearing her voice with Roscoe. I'm looking forward to the next episode. The title itself and the description up on Apple TV's got me fascinated. It's called Pizza. The Turners open a family business as a front to a greater purpose. What craziness are they going to be up to? So far, this show is not disappointed from where it was in season one. I'm looking forward to the whole 10. I'm not going to give up on this show. I'm going to keep watching it, and I'm going to keep doing reviews after every episode. They may be Friday. They may be the next day on Saturday or Sunday. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to our channel. Until next time, I'm Joe.